Uh, Brian, I wanted to ask, you know, going from season one to season two, you know, you had a break to like think about it, really examine season one. I'm interested, were there any things that you really wanted to change from season one or things that you really liked that you want to make sure that you kept in season two? Um, yeah, well, a couple things happened different for me between season one, season two, season one. I was there, I wrote an episode, but um, I, I wasn't as involved on day to day. I, I, I literally went home, you know. Um, and when season two got greenlit, I got a call from Sony and said, we're about to greenlit season two, but uh, we would like you to come to work. And I'm like, oh, and they go, we, we want more of the aesthetic of the show. We, you know, we just, we'd like you and Raimi to really go forward and, and, and really conquer. And I was like, great. And I sat down with my wife and, and the kids to figure it out because it was a, it was a bit of a lifestyle change. But, yeah. um, but it was like, yeah, I want that too. And there was, there was just things where about halfway through the first season, and I think we talked about last time we were here, about episode six of the first season, the show kind of found its footing, and which is pretty fast for most shows. Yeah. Like, like it, it, people don't remember, but back in the day, you know, it would be the second season where people really found their, when you think of The Shield, or you think of The West Wing, or Star Trek Next Generation, or Buffy, it's they're a, a decent first season, but it's that second season where they really found it. Mm -hmm. You know, they really went, like, mm -hmm. took stock of what they had and really blasted through the doors. And, um, and using that as uh, inspiration that we could do it as well, looking at episode six of the, of the, um, the first season, everything got better. Like, it's just, every, and it also was no small thing that was the first time most of the cast was in the same room. So you got to really see the ensemble play. And you're like, see, look at that. The ensemble is very, very strong. And the, the 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 look of this show could be very special, right? And then at the same time, with Jessica Jones and Daredevil hitting, it just like look look how look how far we can take a visual look of a of a comic book show. So the, these things inspired us to go forward. And, and me and Ramey sat down and literally made a list of here's what we do, here's where we spend the money, blah blah blah. And as I said before, with these new hires behind the scenes, that was. That was that was a big deal. I wanted I, I I was in the writers' room for the whole time. Wrote a couple episodes. Really helped everywhere I can just to gear it into um, into the comic book when it needed to be, and then mm -hmm. to be its own thing when it needed to be. Because that's also an important part, and it's a weird balance. You don't want to be a slave to the source material. You want it, but you want to have it there every time you need it. But then when the show is starting to sing on its own. Let it sing. Don't don't yeah. don't start trying to shove it into another box. And and we were very successful. Our writers' room was very interesting group of writers from uh, Ben Edlund who created a tick. He was there. He yeah. and uh, uh, we had procedural people and character people and people from last season. And we all had strengths and weaknesses and great arguments and and a lot of fun. Uh, together and and some of the crazier ideas just came out of just those conversations. So yeah. So from from, and then right away, like just from the beginning, you're like, oh, I think we got it. Like you know, there's like the hires, everything was coming together. And as soon as we kind of set and it all started to flow, we're like, and all the actors. You remember, you guys come and go. This is better. So much better. <laughs> this, this, am I nuts? Does this feel a lot better? This and I was like, so good. and that's yeah. where Ramey and his experience in in. Um, Television really helped because he really knew, he really knew what to do and yeah. how to get it. He so, oiled the wheels like, yeah. very well, and yeah. it was just the machine. Once it was on the track, it was just going, yeah. and it was great. And it was just a great partnership for me, and uh, like we, we really like each other, you know. Yeah. And, and it was just it, you know, it was just a great experience. Cool. And then using Mike Oming quite often, yeah. anywhere we could, um, in the visuals or the pre-production, and then finding out that our, our special uh, visual effects um, uh, director. And Mike Oming kind of look like their brothers. I don't know yeah. if you caught that. Yeah. And they're they're both like demonic, and they have a lot of darkness in their in their artwork. Oh. And so we like in the comic, I would write, and this person's been murdered, and it's horrible, and they're dead on a bed. Then Mike would draw the most horrible thing you'd ever seen, <laughs> like really horrible, and like take someone's boob off and just put it right next yeah. to them. And they're like, oh, yeah, I didn't I've have, seen it. Yeah, and it's then, pretty gross. But, then, <laughs> but someone would say to me, like, ooh, what's wrong with you? You thought of it. I go, no, no, I didn't think of, you know. And also Mike was in a weird place where he would draw a sex scene whether I wrote it or not. <laughs> so I started aiming them into the story, you know. Oh, okay. So then when we got on set, I was trying to capture these moments from, from the show. Our visual effects coordinator 
really dark guy who, thank God, has it, right? It was so funny. Yeah. And he would love Mike, and they were like, became brothers because of like, I'm gross, you're gross, let's make a dead body. And, and, uh, and, and he literally just had all these body parts for us to explode and do crazy stuff. It was the funniest set. That, <laughs> you come <laughs> yeah. home and you're like, oh, home. Set for me is yeah. home. You right. come home and I'd be like, oh, there's blood everywhere. Okay. Crafty? <laughs> like, it's just it's hilarious. No, Mike, it Mike, drew, <laughs> Mike, Mike yeah. drew a dead body, which you'll see in episode nine, where their, their uh, intestines are draped over a fence. It's just... And then he just drew it that way. And then I showed it to the thing, and literally, like, like, like it was the Bible. He perfectly laid oh, out the. Oh God! Yeah. yeah so. Okay.